This is Ray Carcillo, and I am here with Carl Stewart, the brand director for uh, Crystal, Di Crystal Dynamics. How are you doing today? Good. Very good. Thank you. Uh, we just played a demo of Lara Croft and the Guardian of Light, and I've just got to say how phenomenal and how much fun it was. Uh, it's your first straight download, downloadable title with Lara Croft. How hard was it to do it in a way, you know, there's so many hardcore Lara Croft fans, to do a, a downloadable title and fit in everything you wanted to fit in? Um, it's always a tough job. We just want to make sure the fans and the community are always looked after. But uh, it was, I wouldn't say easy, because nothing's ever easy, but in a way, Tomb Raider and Lara Croft is in our DNA. Crystal Dynamics have been looking after it for the last three games, and we have a very passionate team. We have a bunch of guys and girls who really want to make sure no matter what we do, they do the best possible game. So for us to pick an arcade title uh, and to go headfirst into it, all the guys and girls were excited to say, let's push the boundaries on it. Let's make sure that we get the right balance of puzzle solving, good combat, good exploration. So hopefully, I'm glad you liked it. That's, that's cool. <laughs> Now, one thing I noticed about the gameplay is is that it's kind of got a, a gauntlet kind of feel to it. Oh, that overhead uh, look to it. What what went into the decision to to go with that? Was it just in terms of being able to make it fit, you know, as a downloadable game, or what went into that decision? Um, we kind of came about it through uh, an experimental process. We tried several different sort of new ideas, uh, and we took a step back and realized that we have 15 years of history of doing puzzle games and exploration, and then taking inspiration from Baldur's Gate, Gauntlet, looking at our world when we tried the isometric view, we saw something special there, and then obviously looking at the games that have come out over the last year or two, you know, Trials HD and Shadow Complex, and games that have really raised the bar. Uh, it gave us an opportunity to sort of say, now we can come into this space, try something new, uh, and deliver something which we feel like, you know, we broke new ground 15 years ago with being one of the first 3D games, and we hope that we could take this sort of verticality and the sprawler space and exploration and the vistas, traditional vistas that you see in a Tomb Raider game, and bring them to this new digital side. Tell us a little bit about the story about the Guardian, Guardian of the Light. It takes place in Central America. You know, typically Lara is on an adventure for an artifact. But tell us a little bit more about the details of it. So it all started when we made the decision to uh, go down the road of building a digital game. We wanted to make sure that we not drive a peg between the names, but try and create something unique with Tomb Raider that will continue to be that sort of epic adventure. Uh, and Lara Croft this time was about how can we take Lara into this new journey, this new area, bring new things in like co-op. Um, you know, bringing this new combat arena. And as a result of that, we looked at how we could say, well, over, you know, 14, 15 years, Lara's been on these many big journeys. And during that time, she's seen all these secondary journeys. She's sort of seen all these artifacts that she's heard about. Uh, and we decided that that was an avenue for us to sort of say, right, we can compile all that in this journal. This is ultimately Lara's uh, collection of, uh, of stories and things that she's always wants to do on her own. Uh, and this is one of them. This is the Guardian of Light. Uh, is is all about the Mirror Smoke. The Mirror Smoke has been held um, protected, I should say, in a uh, in a tomb deep into the South American jungle by uh, a guardian of light called Totec. And Lara's heard about this story, and she goes looking for it. And she eventually finds it. Uh, when she does, she doesn't realize, but Vasco, who's a mercenary, has followed her, and Vasco tries to steal it. But lo and behold, as soon as he tries to take it out of the tomb, he unleashes Zolot. And Zolot has been banished in this mirror, and Lara didn't really know about the aspect of this story. It was kind of fable, but uh, as soon as he tries to bring it outside of the tomb, Zolot breaks free, kills Vasco and his men, and Totec comes back to life. And between the two of them, your job is to collect the mirror of smoke and take it back before the sun comes up. Which, if it does, you'll see eternal darkness, and Zolot will rule forever. Oh, Eternal Darkness would suck. Yes, we try to keep it very simple. The thing about this story <laughs> is is that it's it's there, and it's awesome to be able to play with a story, but to us, story was a fine balance between giving people the opportunity to pick up an arcade game and play for 10, 15 minutes, or play for six hours, you know, whichever. It's a, The stories have always been a big part of what we do, but bringing story into the arcade space uh, is a unique talent and it's getting the balance right so people feel like they can just have some fun on a Friday afternoon before they go out or play through the game from start to finish in one sitting. Tell us a little bit about the, you touched on it briefly, the, the co-op mode in the game and what made you want to do a co-op mode and how does it work in, the, in this dynamic? So the co-op mode works um, in sort of two ways. One, you can play a single player game, so we've kept the single player for the hardcore fans. Uh, so that you know, Lara is equipped differently. She can traverse the environments and the puzzles in a unique and different way using the physics and one or two extra tools. But by bringing co-op in, uh, it was something where we said it didn't need to be competitive in a sense that you could kill each other or you could grief each other, but it was more about bringing true co-op. 
You know, I've played so much multiplayer games, so many, where it's totally four on four, eight on eight, and you feel alone. Although you're there with all these people, you still feel somewhat alone. You know, if you're capturing the flag, you don't really care where everybody else is. You know, you're watching for a sniper or whatever. Whereas this, it was all about true co-op. How can we develop a scenario where you would come to a situation and you had to work together? You had to think about a situation and say, right, if you do this, I need to do that, and I'll help you get across. And you'll see from some of the, the challenges that we did, it was about talking to each other, about communicating which to us is the, is the essence of what co-op should be. It should really be, so that communication. And so far, anybody who's picked it up and played the co-op has had some great fun. You know, there's some great opportunity to bring people together, and none so much as uh, the community. We really want the community to, to get their hands on it and play it, and uh, these guys and girls have been talking about this game for so long, probably never spoken to each other. So this is a great way for us to help bring people together. Being a downloadable game, sometimes not a lot of them have a lot of length or a lot of value to them, but y how long can we expect uh, Lara Croft and the Guardian like to take and how many chapters can we actually expect from it? So one of our goals when we built this game was to make sure that, again, we pushed the boundaries. We tried to do something exciting and something new and done some more sort of saying, time, how long does it take to get through an arcade game? I've played some where I've blitzed through them in three or four hours and whether they're co-op or whether they're single player. Um, and for us, it was about the sort of the depth, not just about story but gameplay. So we've built, there's approximately 14 chapters. Each one can take anywhere from a quick 10 minutes to sort of pick up and play to 35, 40 minutes. Um, the benchmark that's been set, and we believe that certainly coming into uh, summertime this year with uh, 20, 2010, we want to make sure that it's at least a minimum of six hours. Uh, you know, that, that, that can't be any less. Uh, and that's on single player, and then obviously you bring in your co op. If we keep six hours a standard, um, then obviously the replayability. So we'll see. We'll see how quickly these Tomb Raider fans manage to get through this game. Very cool. And of course, uh, we've been talking a lot. There's a very strong arcade element, as, as we've mentioned. Uh, something that I noticed also and that you, you brought up was uh, the item mapping, about how being able to quickly access items. Uh, talk about how, where the inspiration for that came from and, and you know, what, why you guys decided to implement the system that you didn't. And talk a little bit about the system itself. So the system we implemented was just as a result of research. We spent months downloading games and playing games, and even just outside of arcade games, standard games that we absolutely love. And I had a big frustration along with Daniel, and uh, you know I complained a lot, and he made a solution. And, and the solution was simple. We, we want to be able to go into combat. We want to have a multitude of different weapons, uh, equip ourselves correctly, but not have to take uh, our finger off or our thumb off the left stick. Um, and what we've done is we've mapped it to the left trigger so that you can literally use your right buttons to assign it uh, and choose which weapon you want at an instant. So there's no having to go into the D-pad or go into your inventory and sort of assign it. Uh, as well as that, when you pick up a weapon, you have a five-second uh, opportunity to map it to a button there and then. So if you're using your double, your double weapons and you want to use your flamethrower and it's down on the D-pad down, you can quickly assign it. So we tried to make it very quick, very easy to use, pick up and play. Very cool. And then when, when can we expect to see Tomb Raider available on, online? Um, at the moment, our goal is end of summer, 2010. Well, that was certainly unexpected.